Welcome everyone. This is Michael Gibbs. For those of you who know me, you know that I'm the founder and CEO of Go Cloud Architects, an organization that's really dedicated towards building high performance cloud computing careers. Many of you know me and know that I've been working in technology for over 25 years, and I've been helping the world's largest internet service providers, banks, and healthcare organizations design the highest availability systems throughout the world. And it's something I've done for 25 years. I've worked on Wall Street. I've worked for Cisco for almost a decade. And I've also worked for some other networking vendors. So high availability systems is something I've been working on forever. Now, as an enterprise architect and a network cloud architect and a, and a cloud architect, network enterprise architect, and all kinds of architects, one thing that's really critical for us is designing systems that will work in any situation, meaning no single points of failure. And it's really critical that if an organization is completely dependent upon their technology, that these systems work. Now, we're all in the middle of a huge migration towards cloud computing, and cloud computing is really just another network and a data center that's been virtualized. And what we're doing now as cloud architects for the most part is taking systems from the organization's network and data center and moving into the cloud. And we're on cloud computing for a reason. It's very agile, which gives the businesses lots of transformation abilities. In many cases, it's lower cost than the traditional network and data center. And it's so simple that it enables an organization to focus on the business as opposed to worrying about their technology. But when an organization that's critically dependent upon their technology moves to the cloud, they have to consider the same things that they did in their traditional network and data center environments. They need to make sure that the systems work when they need them. And these cloud providers are really good. They've got the best network engineers, the best network architects, the best cloud architects. They've got some of the best and brightest people in the world. But tech breaks. So let's talk about designing high availability. And because of this, I'm gonna do a free training session tomorrow and again next week for you all. But I want you to all know about it. When we design systems, we design no single points of failure. So let's look at what we would do in a normal environment. If I had two business locations to connect, say a connection in New York, and we have a data center in San Francisco, we need two connections. And we might go to AT&T, who's a large network service provider in the US, and we also go to, say, Verizon. And why do we use two service providers? Because if AT&T has any problems on their network, then Verizon will work. Or if Verizon has any problems with their network, then AT&T will work. And that's the way we've been designing our systems forever for high availability systems. Go to any bank, go to any hospital, go to any service provider, anybody that's critically dependent upon their technology, they use multiple providers. Enter the world of cloud computing. The cloud providers have tried to convince their customers we're completely redundant. We have redundant data centers called availability zones, re redundant regions, large geographies. And the cloud providers have told everyone, you can just create a high availability environment by using two AWS data centers, or two Azure data centers, or four Azure data centers. And when we looked at this at Go Cloud Architects, we said, this is insanity. And we said, you can't do this because it's a single point of failure. And the cloud providers have told everybody it's not, but it is, and here's why. Let's look at a cloud computing environment. It's really just a network in a data center with a little bit of extra software on there. Now let's look at big catastrophic system failures. If a cloud provider's network goes down, just like it happened with AWS, for example, on uh, December 7th, it obviously affects more than one data center. On December 15th, AWS had another massive networking outage, which affected multiple regions. Facebook is not a cloud provider, but they are experts at managing their network. They made a simple BGP mistake and it caused $8 billion of damage. So the point being is system failures are not uncommon. On October 13th, Azure had a massive outage which affected global users. On November 16th, Google Cloud has a substantial outage. So I don't want you to think it's just AWS or just Azure or just Google. They're all excellent, but tech breaks. So when we design high availability, high performance systems, we design them with no single points of failure. Where are the single points of failure in a single cloud environment? I'm gonna tell you right now. Single point of failure number one. If the network goes down, everything is lost. Let's talk about single point of failure number two. There's a control plane or an orchestration plane that actually manages the cloud. 
See, the cloud is just a network in a data center. But what makes the cloud do its thing and its magic is there's some controlling software that gets put on some servers, which lets all the servers become part of the cloud. Should there be any bug or a software bug in that control plane, guess what? The cloud goes down and it's not constrained to an availability zone, it's the whole cloud. So if the network goes down, it can take down the whole cloud. If the control plane goes down, it could take the cloud down the cloud. Now let's start at the third most critical reason why you can't possibly use a single cloud if you care about your systems. There's one other catastrophic failure that can occur in a cloud computing environment with a single cloud. Let's say a hacker were to hack or DDoS, AWS or Azure or Google. By doing that, they can take down their network and their systems, again, causing a catastrophic cloud failure. So if there's a network problem, if there's a security event, or there's a control plane issue, a single cloud becomes a single point of failure. And that's why it's not safe for organizations to use a single cloud provider. Let's evaluate a couple of situations. I've designed many systems for banks. What about in a bank where a minute of downtime could cost $10 million? Do you really want to have a five or an eight hour outage like it just occurred? Of course not, but that's just money. Now let's take a hospital. A hospital puts their electronic medical records on the cloud, their, phys their computerized physician order entry systems on the cloud, their lab and pharmacy systems on the cloud. Now there's a network connection. The hospital can't reach the cloud. Where the cloud goes down, patients will die. So for organizations that need 99.999% availability, that's five minutes and 15 seconds of downtime per year. That's it. You've got to use multi-cloud and multi-availability zones per multiple clouds. There's no other way around it. Even four nines availability, 99.99% of the time, it's not sufficient to do two AWS data centers or two Azure data centers. Why? Because as we've seen this year, no cloud provider for the most part has really even delivered four nines and they can't. And here's the reason, the cloud has so many moving parts. It's not just the network and the data center, it's the control plane, but the cloud is a high value target. Do you wanna hack into me and get photos of my cat or do you wanna hack into Azure Cosmo DB um, like has occurred this year and get access to everybody's customer information? That's why we can't be on a single cloud. So what I'm gonna do is as follows. Tomorrow, I'm gonna to have the first of many multi-cloud lectures for you completely free. What we're gonna do is we're gonna teach you the fundamentals of super high availability networking design tomorrow for the cloud. If we have time tomorrow, we will add a multi-cloud web application. We will come back a week later and teach you how to do multi-cloud security. And we will cover it at a level that you've never seen before, specifically from the networking and the high availability perspective. We will show you things that are only done by the world's largest service providers, banks, and healthcare organizations with the biggest budget. So we're gonna teach you how to do it the best way in the world, and we're gonna do it completely free because we love this cloud computing world. Cloud computing is wonderful. Do not think for a second that I don't love cloud computing. Do not think for a second that I don't believe cloud computing is beneficial for our customers and transformational. I love cloud computing and it's wonderful. But when we design our systems on the cloud, we have to design them with the same diligence, performance, availability, and security we would use in the traditional environment. Just because the cloud's easier doesn't mean we can afford to uh, realistically skimp on the things that matter most, security, availability, performance. So multi-cloud is the only solution. The alternative is a hybrid cloud, which is the organization creates a cloud like a Nutanix cloud or an OpenStack cloud in their data center. And they connect that to say the AWS cloud and the Google cloud. That's a super high availability design, three clouds. So when it comes to availability, there's a rule. There's a saying that says one is none, because one will fail. Two is one, meaning if you have two, you, you really have one when th one thing fails, and three is greater than two. One is none, two is one, three is greater than two. If you want it to work and always work, you gotta use a lot of redundancy, no single points of failure, no single cloud. So. That's all I really wanted to let you know. Tomorrow afternoon, we are gonna invite you for lots of free training. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to ask me these questions right now and I'll do anything I can to ask them, answer them for you. Chris, do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, we had one a little bit about misinformation, but I'll bring it up so you can address it. Sure. And I already clarified for him that it was multiple regions. 
So Damien, so if AWS region had trouble, wouldn't the following best practice running across multiple regions work? No. Um, today, Damien, here's what happened. We had a multi-region failure. So that's the, that's the reason why we can't do this because AWS had an issue in an availability zone, but it took down half of their cloud customers. Half of the world couldn't access the management console or their systems. Google had an issue and infected many of their customers. AWS has had multi-region and multi-availability zone failures. That's the whole point. You can't plan around it in a single cloud. One network outage takes down the whole cloud. One control plane outage takes down the whole cloud. Yes, we're very aware that lots of organizations are using multiple regions and multiple availability zones. And Damien, none of them have had four nines availability this year because the outages that have occurred have all precluded anyone for the most part from having high availability. So single cloud, single point of failure. We would never do it in networking. We would never do it in a data center. And we should never do it in the cloud. Any other questions, Chris? Anil, uh, you're welcome. So happy to be here for you. No, nope, that's it. OK, well, then everyone, um, tomorrow we will teach you how to design the high availability part of the networking to connect to multiple clouds. And we're going to get in depth of all those things you probably ever even thought about. So we're going to make it good. We're going to teach you everything from the connections and everywhere. And Neil Kumar, how can we use multi-cloud design with cost effectiveness? And Neil, that's a really great question. So, you know, you're actually competing against two competing market forces here in Kumar. So when you deal with one cloud, I can go to Azure and I can negotiate a good rate. I'm going to give you these 100,000 servers, these five petabytes of storage, and here's my rate. And they'll do that, and they'll give you a better rate. Now, Neil, I want you to think about it. I now have AWS and Azure competing against each other. Now I can say, if you don't give me the good rate, I'll just go to Azure or Google. Now I've got bargaining power. Now, Anil Kumar, I want you to really think about what happened. The cloud providers offer customers a very substantial discount on their first year to move to the cloud. And this substantial discount can be truly transformational for the business. It can enable them to try new systems that they could not afford, create new sources of revenue, business optimization, business transformation at a price they can afford. And as their business grows in that year through the use of wonderful cloud computing and business transformation services, the rate, their price will be raised a year later. Now, Anu Kumar, say, imagine you, your cloud provider says to you, it's time to raise your rates. And you say, I don't think so, because I'm not running a cloud native service. I'm in Azure right now and Google. AWS, if you want to raise my rates, bye. AWS will not be raising your rates. Now, let's say Google wants to raise your rates, but you're in Azure or AWS. They're not going to. And Azure won't raise your rates when you're competing against Google and AWS. You have much more bargaining power when you're not a single vendor. And when you start using things that are industry standard, what do I mean by industry standard? I'm not going to use WAF and Shield in my security architecture. I'm going to use an industrial commercial thing. I'm going to use a network load balancer, and I'm going to front end two Cisco firewalls or two Palo Alto firewalls. You know what? I'm going to do that on Azure, Google, and AWS, because I want enterprise grade anyway. And by doing that, I can be on any of them. And no, I'm not going to use a DynamoDB or a CosmoDB or a cloud, Google Cloud Big Table. I'm going to use a MongoDB or an Apache Cassandra for my NoSQL needs, because I can stick that on any cloud. And I can synchronize it on any cloud. So you can design much more cost effective when you have bargaining power. When you have no bargaining power, you are at the mercy of your cloud provider. And if they want to raise your rates, they can. And if you're locked into their vendor proprietary things, you can't get off without spending a lot of money. So how do you design multi-cloud in a cost-effective manner? You use standards-based things. You use good business and good bargaining power, and you get develop great negotiation skills, and you negotiate better rates with your cloud providers. So that's what we do. Um, so nice to speak to you today. So nice to see you. Um, we're going to have you get back to your day. Join us for the free training tomorrow and take care. Look forward to seeing you all very soon.